Hello everybody, this is Ryan. Welcome to lesson 35 on HTML and CSS. In this lesson we'll be covering tables in HTML and we'll also look at CSS in order to change the presentation of the table. So let's begin by looking at W3Schools and the tag reference for HTML and I want to show you the tags that I'm going to focus on on this particular lesson. So to start off with we're going to look at the most important tag for a table and that is the table tag. So the table tag looks like this, has an opening tag and a closing tag and then some of the other tags we'll also be looking at are the sub tags of the table which is the TR for table row and then TH for table header and TD for table data. Okay so let's dive right on in and have a look at some of these tags uh, starting with the table tag. The table tag is a block level tag um, so, but there is a slight difference from this block level tag to the ones you've done so far. It does not take up the full width of the browser by default. So it actually just grows to accommodate whatever content you give it. So let's start with the table row. Um, and then inside that row we're going to have columns. So the columns are done with using TDs. TD stands for table data cell. So let's have apples and oranges and just for fun I'll put a picture in the third column remember that um, it's really used for structuring content on the page so you can easily put a picture or any content within a, a cell of a table okay so let's see what we can use for our picture I think I'll just use man.jpg man the JPEG and then I'm going to make it just small so we can see uh, remember when working with pictures you should resize them using some sort of uh, photo editor rather than artificially deflating the size with HTML okay so I'm going to then add a second row to my table each, each row in the table is a physical set of TR tags and then this needs to be symmetrical so because I had three columns in the first row I need to now save three columns in the next row and in the last yeah okay so let's go ice cream sweets and chocolate Right, so there we have our table. It doesn't really look like a table because there's no borders. But if you highlight your mouse over the content of the table, you'll quite clearly see that it is in fact a table. It has two rows and three columns in each row. And notice how the table has grown to accommodate the content. So because I inserted a picture into this block, this block grew to a width to accommodate the picture. So let's go into some CSS now. I want to look at the CSS reference. And there's a section on tables. And these are some of the style sheets we can apply to a table. Before we have a look at these, I want to just add a standard border to my table. So I'm linking to lesson 535.css and I'll just create some rules for my table. That should put a one pixel border around my table. Now what about the borders between the rows and the columns? Well, we can do this by just adding this border also to all the table data cells. Remember if you comma separate tags here in the selectors it will apply these rules to all of those tags. So now it's starting to look more like a table. The next thing is we can use some of these so we can change the spacing of the borders. 
so I, I apply this only to the table not to the TD so it will be border spacing and I'll make it say 5 pixels so let's see what that does notice how it increases the spacing between each of the borders then another thing we can do is add padding because remember padding is the co the distance between the content and each border so padding would actually look quite nice but then the padding we add to the TD level much better now the contents not touching the the border okay then another nice style sheet we can use is the border collapse the border collapse basically has two possible values either separate or collapse so separate is what we have by default basically that's meaning there are two separate borders here for each each block so you can actually collapse those borders into one and it actually looks quite nice so we do that on a table level and we say um, border collapse colon border collapse colon collapse and then this obviously becomes redundant so we just comment that out you can't have spacing between borders if there is only one single border so that's what it looks like when you collapse your borders which I think looks quite professional and then you can add background colors to your blocks as well so you could say background maybe make it a light gray uh, rather use codes for your colors I'm just being lazy okay and then going back to our HTML we could add headings to each of these columns so we'll start a new row right at the top of the table it has to still be symmetrical because every row has three columns so the top row also needs to have three columns the difference now is I'm going to use a TH instead of a TD so a TH and a TD are identical in nature except that a TH actually bolts the text and centers the text inside of it so this basically has the effect of creating a heading for each column doesn't matter what you put in here okay so there we have it it's bolded and centered the text so now what about the borders between each of these columns that we can do by adding a th to the list so that it applies the border to the th as well and then we could also set the background color for the th as well if we wanted to maybe a bit of padding change the font and so on okay the next thing we can do with CSS is we can change the width or the height of the table um, as I said before even though a table is a block element it does not take up the full width of the browser by default so if you wanted it to take up the full width of the browser you would have to actually apply a width to your table um, either in pixels or as a percentage a percentage will be relative to the browser width whereas the pixel measurement is an absolute measurement so it will always be fixed at that width so that's 400 pixels let's try something a bit wider 600 pixels okay so it depends on you how wide you want to make your table and of course remember this will apply to every table so you may not necessarily want to apply a width of 600 pixels to every table on the page so then you would go to using a class instead alright um, another thing we could do is set the height okay I tend to avoid setting the height because remember as your content grows then it will then start overflowing the table area if your height isn't big enough okay so I'll just set the width for now 
Um, then we're going to add a caption to our table in HTML. This is optional, you don't have to do this. So th the caption always goes right underneath the opening table tag. There's the first line. There you can see your caption. Um, there's a style sheet also that affects the caption. It's called caption side. And it can be set to either top or bottom. By default, the caption's obviously on the top of the table. If we want to put it at the bottom of the table, we would just apply a table, uh, a caption side, caption side to bottom. And there's my caption now at the bottom. And then, of course, we can have a, s a separate style sheet for the caption. Remember, it this will affect all captions, of course. So you might say something like um, font 12 pixels Arial. You could even align it to the right instead of to the center or to the left. Here we have it. It's probably better either on the left or in the center. And you might prefer it on top. It's really your choice. Okay, something else we can do with tables is something called row span and col span. This is basically merging your cells. So for example, if we wanted to take apples and oranges and merge them into one, I would have to delete oranges first to make room for apples to expand. So we'll delete oranges. And then we add a property called col span into the block that you want to expand. And we put a number in there, that number would be how many columns you wanted to take up. So at this stage I'm telling it to only take up two columns. So you can see apples now takes up column one and column two. If I wanted to also take up column three, I can, but then I'll have to delete the contents of column three as well to make room and then set that to a three. Okay, another thing we can do is <coughs> row span Row span is where you have your content take up more than one row. So if, if I want this picture to take up two rows, I would have to first get rid of chocolate. That's in the row beneath it. And then for my image, I will set the row span to a span of two. Okay, so you can see now how that is now taking up two blocks, two rows. Then in terms of aligning our content, we learnt about the two ways we can align in CSS. For example, you could say text-align-center, that's on the horizontal level. Okay. Um, as soon as a block has a height to it, you can also use a vertical align to v align top or bottom. So maybe we can do a quick demonstration. So let's say I add a class called align, or maybe let's call it custom. And I'm going to set a height of 300, let's make it 500 pixels. And then I'm going to apply that class to my um, cell with the man in it. Okay, so the cell with the man has now got a height of 400, which is pretty big. And you can see that by giving it a height, it's automatically aligned in the middle in terms of the vertical axis on the Y axis. So if you want that picture to rather be at the top, 
then that's where the vertical alignment comes in say vertical dash align top and let's put the picture on top it could also be bottom as well uh, if you want it on the right obviously then you use your text dash align we've set it on a global level for all TDs to be centered so on a custom level you can override that it's like a child you can put on the left or the right so now the picture is on the left and in the top so you can effectively put it in quite a few spots just by using a combination of vertical alignment and text align alright so this ends our lesson on working with tables in HTML and CSS.